what we were hoping for and even better than that. Um, you can't really ask the kick and drill program a lot better than this. Four short months ago, Kirkland Lake Discoveries added the Winnie Lake property to their massive 40,000 hectare land package. Winnie was once thought to be a VMS system back in the 1980s. But today, in 2025, when viewed under a fresh lens, Winnie appears to be part of a much larger intrusion-related system. The KLDC team has put in the geology work to firm up this theory. Mapping, grab sampling, channel sampling, and high-resolution magnetic surveys. Permits are in place, drillers are employed, reclamation plans are underway, it's time to drill. We're here, we're back at the Winnie. The context of it is just so much different. We've been staring at those maps for a few months now, so yeah. being able to get out here after seeing all of that stuff and putting it into context, it makes it a lot easier to understand what we're trying to do. The Discovery Hole of 8901 went directly under the shaft. Ours is aimed to the west over here a bit more. You know, probably 15-ish meters between those. The mineralization seems to be going that way, which is... Yeah, trending towards the west, and, and that's been previously untested because they've always, they've gone either uh, basically towards the east or looking around in the Mayfield Volcanics, but never testing along the strike in the west. So that's really, uh, that's really encouraging to see. Because the drill hole is so far back, we hit mineralization right from the surface. Yeah, that's the crazy right? part. For so, me, that's like, yeah. You, when you look, because you're like, okay, so it's way over there. And we know this is that surface over here, but there's obviously a great distance between there and there. And it was mineralized, like we said, probably for the first 60 meters. Yeah. So it's pretty, I don't know, it's, it's mind blowing when you're looking at that from there all the way to here. So, yeah, super encouraging. Super encouraging, it's really exciting. Yeah. So the next couple drill holes, we're basically testing between Mini Winnie and Winnie, trying to see how those are connected. And trying to find that contact too, because in the mapping it's really difficult to see because it's all undercover. The geophysics definitely gave us some help, but um, you know, the drilling for both finding the mineralization between the two, and then as well, getting the geological knowledge of where the contact is so we can continue to, to chase that theory down. Okay, so after we're done over there, after we get the contact, uh, you know, tracing out that contract between Mini, yep. Mini Winnie and Winnie, yep. well, what's next? Where are we going? Uh, we're going to the southeast, and that is where, uh, so in the geophysics, if you guys remember, we have that, basically this rim of, of a high mag uh, feature. And so we're thinking that um, that is either one of two things. It's either a folded unit, and there's mafic volcanics in the center, which one could argue that that increases the amount of uh, strike length with contact, so that's good regardless. Yeah. And then secondly, it could be the oxidized rim of the intrusion, and then a reduced center, which would be excellent for the contacts that we're looking at here. So the idea is to go from the mag high into the mag low and cross cut right through it, and then we could actually figure out what that is. Yeah, everything's coming together slowly but surely, step at a time. It's very exciting. Super, yeah. super, duper exciting. <laughs> Out of the woods and back to the core shack, samples from hole number one. 25, 28 are on the bench. This is it. This is exciting, man. We finally get some core out of the ground at Winnie Lake. Yeah. Um, this looks beautiful. Tell me everything about this. Well, it's great. It, honestly, it's what we were hoping for and even better than that. Um, you can't really ask to kick a drill program off better than this. Uh, so we collared into the uh, Mayfield Volcanics, which we thought. Uh, or predicted and uh, pretty much right at the top of the hole we hit uh, silicification and a uh, high kind of concentration of sulfides. Uh, they were disseminated throughout and then we got into essentially a massive sulfide layer um, at around, what is it, the uh, 
uh, 18 meter mark kind of thing, 24 meter mark there. And that's where we have just, it's, it's a literal layer of massive sulfides that's over a meter wide. And then with the halos of the uh, silicification and sulfides around it, I mean, it's like at least a 10 meter wide Awesome. corridor for this yeah and it's great and the core angles are good so we're hitting it at a nice angle we're not uh, uh going down the throat of something right we're yep. hitting it at a at a good spot so super exciting i mean this is the nicest core that i've ever seen from opening up a box from a drill program like it's nice. it's awesome just in case somebody doesn't know silicification uh silica flooding so basically you have uh uh a silica rich fluid going through there and that's what makes quartz veins yeah so sometimes you quartz vein they manifest themselves in in fractures and they actually form a vein themselves. Other times the rock's a bit more permeable and it floods the, um, basically the pores and the permeability or the pores in the, uh, in the rock. And that's what carries the sulfides, right? So that, that mm. fluid has the sulfides in it. Uh, it has the gold in it. And so when you get silicification, you have a pretty good chance of getting mineralization with it as well. So Drake, this, this hole, the idea behind it was we're trying to see what the, the previous holes were like um, you know, the, it, it's not a, it's not a twin. We're 10 meters away. We're more West of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what does that mean for this as compared to had we, you know, gone right down the throat of the other one? Right. So basically it gives us, uh, more confidence that there is some strike length to the system. So if we were to twin, uh, the 8901 hole, we would have basically confirmed results from before with this hole, we've added more results so we've extended the strike length of it so that really uh builds some confidence for uh the potential for this to have some size i mean it doesn't really get much better than this like you see all the calcopyrite through there i mean it's beautiful A beautiful thick band of it eh? like yeah like what you can't even tell what rock this was before it's oh you have all, no idea yeah it's, it's all sulfide it's literally massive sulfides the whole <laughs> so, thing yeah and then you could see above and below that we have, uh, it's where the silica blasted through. So you could see there's a, a, yeah. a high density of, uh, or a high percentage of sulfides through here too. There's, there's sulfides everywhere here. Like yeah. this is, this goes right to the top of the hole and there's sulfides. The whole it's way. disseminated throughout here. Mm -hmm. And you could see just the, the silica flooding through there. And then you also get some of the case, uh, case bar alteration in there as well. So, you know, that's another good thing because potassic alteration is, is a good thing in these systems. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. And then at the bottom here, um, this is around uh, 31 meters, 32 meters. You can see all these fractures infilled with potassic alteration. It's a really good sign. It looks nice. So this is separated, it looks like. So we have kind of these, these massive sulfides and we have these red rocks and then it looks like we're back into it again. Yeah. So what what's this, the, the red rock? Is that a cyanite finger or? Yeah, I kind of think that because the way that these systems behave, it's not, uh, there's a basically a, a perfectly straight contact between the two. They so kind of kind of like undulating uh, arms coming out of it. Gotcha. And so it'll intercept it. But even in here, you could look at the frag, like one, it's silica flooded, right? Because you Big could time. see there's, it's just soaked through there. What happens below 33 meters? Is this just stop or? Yeah, no, so it's it's really cool. So we have the, uh, this Mayfa volcanic unit continues. And then we have another kind of silicification area. And it's even, if you can believe it, it's more silicified than at the top and there's more sulfides in it. And then we have another layer of massive sulfides that we, basically the exact same uh, thing that we see here. We have another layer of that and that's uh, uh, just shy of two meters wide. So, Amazing. I mean, yeah, looks really great. And then on the shoulders of that, both above and below, like I said, we have those uh, silica rich rocks um, that carry quite a bit of sulfide as well. So if those shoulders run, then we have a really wide system here and that's gonna be, you know, that's excellent. That's what we wanna see. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Excited and optimistic, the team put their heads down to tech, measure, tag, cut, and prepare the samples for the lab. The results the team have been dreaming of are closer than ever.